The only real hope and change you'll ever get is from God. It's going to come from the Lord or it's not going to come at all. It's going to come when you admit that you can't do it and that you've got to have His help. Today we are going to look at one Bible verse that all Christians must meditate on. This one Bible verse will guide you from this earth all the way to eternity. This one Bible verse is 2 Timothy 2 verse 22. Flee from youthful passions and pursue righteousness, faith, love and peace, together with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Paul's word to Timothy concerning lusts applies to all of us believers. It applies to each and every one of us. Although Paul says youthful lusts because he was speaking to Timothy, who himself is a young man, this however doesn't mean we can ignore the words of the Apostle Paul if we're older. Stephen Cole comments that we usually associate the term lusts with sexual temptations. But men, they aren't just youthful. You don't outgrow sexual temptations. Where do you think we got the term dirty old man from? The word translated lusts may refer to any desires, although it usually refers to sinful desires. So while sexual temptation may be included in youthful lusts, it's probably not the primary focus. Rather, Paul was probably referring to wrong desires that younger men are more prone to. 2 Timothy 2 verse 22 can be split into two sections, things to flee and things to pursue. We live in a world that encourages you to fall into all sorts of lusts, greed and uncleanliness. The sooner you understand this, the sooner you will be able to follow the instructions of God in 2 Timothy 2 verse 22. Understand this, you live in a godless, satanic world. You live in a world that is molded by Satan's system. The world has only one aim, to draw us away from God. And one of the methods of how this world does this is through lusts. Look at the adverts on TV. Look at the TV shows in today's age. Look at the billboards. All day you are being bombarded by lust and temptation. And on top of all of that, because of the advancement in technology, it is easier than ever to gratify your lust by picking up your phone or your computer. God instructs you to fight the devil. God instructs you to put on the whole armor of God and for you to go head to head with the devil and his demons. He encourages time and time again to wrestle against the enemy and his forces. But notice this, God tells us to run from lust, flee also youthful lusts. Just stop and think of the implications of this. God instructs us to fight the devil head on, but he instructs us to flee lust. But yet we live in a culture that toys with lust. This world flirts with lust, it encourages it. This is God's advice for you today. Flee also youthful lusts. Now let's look at the word flee. Flee means to move quickly from a point or area in order to avoid presumed danger or difficulty. In this particular case, the danger or difficulty is lust. To flee means to run away to seek safety by flight, to run or move hastily from danger. Notice how the Bible does not say to resist lusts or to overcome lusts with a strong faith or fight lust with your self-control. Pray to overcome lust, no. Paul uses the verb flee, a definitive and active word, when it comes to how to handle lusts. Run, flee, escape. Allow me to put it into modern day examples so that you can relate to it. If you are in your place of work and a colleague flirts with you, don't entertain it. It's not harmless. It's not innocent. Millions of people have fallen prey to harmless flirting. Harmless flirting is the first step to sexual immorality. When you begin to flirt, you start blurring the lines that you should not cross. Another example is the pages you follow and people you follow on social media. If you're a man and there is a particular female you follow that leads you to lust, unfollow her. If you're a woman and there is a particular man you follow that leads you to lust, unfollow him. 
make a covenant with your eyes not to look at things that will cause you to lust. Another example is if you are a lady, be selective about books you read, the TV shows you watch, or the podcasts you listen to. On one particular occasion, my wife and I counseled a young lady that struggled with the issue of lust, and it turned out what was triggering her lust was the novels she used to read. The novels she used to read were extremely descriptive and graphic, and these novels would have her imagination running wild. But here is the hard reality. To flee lust means there is content you cannot consume. There are podcasts you can listen to. There are TV shows, movies, books and people that you need to cut out. I repeat, to listen to God's advice, to flee youthful lusts, there is content that you as a Christian cannot consume. Jesus in Matthew 5 verse 29 and 30 is using a figure of speech. He is not speaking literally. Matthew 5 verse 29 and 30 And if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out, and cast it from thee, for it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. And if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off, and cast it from thee, for it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell? The answer is simple. Follow God's word and flee lust. You must deal decisively and definitively with lust. Whether you are married or not married, deal decisively and definitively with lust. If you see that you struggle in a particular area, put measures in place to ensure that you don't keep falling. Ladies, when God tells you to flee lust and tells you to deal decisively and definitively with lust, it is for your own benefit. It is because He loves you. He knows the outcome of a life that is dictated by lust and sin, and He doesn't want that outcome for you. Ladies, you are so precious to God. Never forget that. Apostle Paul gave this same warning to the Corinthian believers as a formula. 1 Corinthians 6 verse 18 which reads, Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body, but he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. The apostle used the word fornication to replace the word youthful lust in 2 Timothy 2 verse 22. If fleeing lust helped the people of old, there is no doubt it will help for you and me. Paul, who also wrote about the power of fleeing from sin, also commented on how he disciplined himself in order to run a worthy race. The subject matter of lust is what every believer must be on guard against. Jesus said that if your right eye will cause you to sin, you should pluck it out. That could be applicable to lust. As much as it lies within us, we must learn to discipline our eyes from looking at things that will corrupt our heart and draw us into sin. Job made a covenant with his eyes not to behold a maid. Job 31 verse 1, I made a covenant with my eyes not to look lustfully at a young woman. That was his method of fleeing from lust. He blocked every channel of lust through which he was drawn to sin. 2 Timothy 2 verse 22 ended by saying, But follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace, with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. This reveals to me that righteousness is something that can be followed. Righteousness is something that we can intentionally follow and chase after. Do you know what that tells me? It tells me that although this sinful world encourages unholy living, it is possible to live a righteous life. How can I follow righteousness? Simply put, by following God. To follow God will demand you to live a righteous and holy life. Instead of following our lustful desires, we must follow righteousness, love, faith and peace. These are holy virtues that keep us away from lust. If we follow after righteousness, we cannot fulfill our own lustful desires. More so, love and lust are two contrasts. If we love genuinely, lust will have no place in us. Running from sin is a great act of wisdom. It proves that we truly fear God. People who failed 
to flee from lust suffered dire consequences as a result. David, Amnon, Solomon, Samson were victims of lust. Their lives are enough examples for us to learn from. It is better to flee and be embarrassed than to cover your secret sins. Philippians 4 verse 8 admonishes us thus, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. 2 Timothy 2 verse 22 is advice that we all should take heed of. Also in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers. It takes the grace of God to change us, folks. How can you be saved if you're not willing to repent? And the Lord Jesus Christ said, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish.